Let's move on and see the ramp object. This object also has a dedicated editor that opens once the object is fixed into place. Here we can insert a ramp, a carved ramp and a landing if necessary. While still attached to the mouse cursor, with the F7 and F8 key we can rotate the object and with the F5 and F6 key we can move its anchor point. To the right we can define its characteristics and with a click we will place the ramp to a corner of our building. Let's now insert in a continuation a straight ramp. We will define a weight, for example 6 meter, and at any time I can click on the edit button and the ramp becomes a polyline so I can freely modify the edges. We attach the straight ramp to the curve, obtaining, at least parametrically, the correct design layout for our ramp. Now directly in 3D we will also adjust the ramp altimetrically. We have these green object grips that allow us to raise the end or the starting part of the ramp and make it link up to the road or the basement. Now let's move on and add a landscape wall that follow the ramp sideway. As always we open the object menu, select the landscape wall object and insert this very useful landscape design entity using any surrounding object as a snap node reference to connect to. The F5 and F6 function key align the entity axis and as always I can select a straight segment, convert it to a curve and define its curvature according to the ramp's shape. To the right, being a parametric entity, we can define the object properties. Let's say that we want the upper section of the wall to be horizontal and defined in dimension. In this case we will select the point and acquire the curved section of wall so as to obtain the correct height. Now the yard entity. We can simply trace a polyline to define its footprint. For each side we can type in the measurement and press center so as to define it with maximum precision. The yard assumes the average height of the terrain, therefore after the insertion you may need to adjust it to the correct height. Let's continue with the design until the entire perimeter is closed. So we will see the defined polyline transformed into a yard with the relating material layer and altitude. To change the dimension, we can select it and type in the correct value with the keyboard input or with the mouse cursor. Simply click on an elevation reference node, in this case the windows threshold, or manually type in the value directly in the yard object central label. Taking a look at this different file, we already have some entities inserted, in fact we have a sidewall and an earthwork already present. Now let's use the flower bed. Simply select it from the toolbar and trace its contour. Same applies for the swimming pool. Just trace its perimeter. For both of these last two entities, we can use automatism to insert a railing directly on the upper edge of the wall or eventually a covering for the wall. And now about the vegetation. When selecting this object type, we can automatically populate a given area or a segment by tracing a polyline that creates a series of tree or bushes in a scattered order and with a different height. Let's choose our types here. In this case, we will insert two different essence, lavender and bamboo. We will quickly generate our trees by tracing the polyline across the surface of our earthwork. Then we can choose density size and a randomizing setting that adds a more natural disorder effects and change their alignment along the polyline. We can also insert tree and bush one by one. So instead of drawing a polyline or an area, we can draw trees choosing from our library beam or open the online catalog and choose among the objects that we publish daily. With a simple click we can insert them directly in the 3D view and we can change their height by typing in their values directly or by visual editing in the 3D view by raising or lowering the cone here at the middle. 
Now that we have seen the powerful beam modeling tools, let's take a look what is defined as 5D beam, the construction cost estimating. Let's see a bill of quantity example relating to our structure. We will quickly access the environment by clicking on the Primus integration button. Once opened, we have the bill of quantity editor windows, a level view and a 3D view. To account for an object's cost, simply select it, click on the open price list button, select a reference price list and open it. At this point, with the beam entity selected, we simply find the relating cost element in the price list file, drag it over the add text, releasing the price list item, and the software will assign the unit rate to the beam entity, and then ask us which category it belongs to for estimate the document organization. We can create categories, supercategories, and subcategories, and then confirm. The pop-up editor allows us to prepare formulas by typing in a description or access more detailed measurement info relating to software variables, for example the level number. In the land, weight and height field we can insert our variables, this means that specific object related measurement data is acquired directly from the object itself, without needing to insert data manually. For example, here we want the door width variable, we always click on this button and choose the width and then proceed in the same way for the height value. At this point the quantity is multiplied by the unit rate and will give us the total amount. A click on close concludes the quantity takeoff and serving for our door. When we link a drawing entity to a price list item, this basically means that there is a direct correlation between beam models and cost model. So whenever the 3D model of our building changes, so will the cost estimate, keeping everything aligned even in terms of cost and measurements. We can proceed object by object, but also for entire category of object in our project. In this case, we will select the whole building and notice that we have only one door accounted. And by clicking here, we can estimate all the door in one editing session. Let's see this aspect again when dealing with wall rendering and plaster. To estimate the interior plaster of this room, we will select it, open our price list and check among the various items, for example, this painting item here. Then drag it to the add button, define the categories, and now see this other cost estimate method. We can use the software formulas by clicking on the white sheet button and choose the type of measurement method we want to use. For example, the wall surface without tile, so we will subtract any empty space. The software is calculating the perimeter of the space and multiplying by height. Notice that the software has already subtracted the empty areas, such as the opening and the windows, by adding them to the list here. For rooms, we will select all the space we want to estimate and insert them all in the bill of quantity. For the rest of the building, we must proceed with the cost estimating in a similar manner, by selecting the different objects so as to obtain the construction cost estimate total cost. Again, for a set of objects, we can proceed as follow. Select the building envelopes and with the selection filter, I can set up a search criterion based on thickness or other geometrical characteristics. So I will select all the wall with a 30 cm thickness. This will then be united by a single item, for example this, using a predefined formula for surfaces net of any empty space. With just a few steps, we have acquired all the relevant data to acquire measurement and assign cost data to our external wall. So you can see how this particular entity selection filter allows us to group up certain objects and assign them with cost-related info ready for preparing a detailed project cost estimate.